come closer because this week's news warm and cozy. Spotify may be about to change the game when it comes to music education. Think online courses but directly from your favorite artist. Google wants to make music creation accessible to everyone with a wild new experiment. And let's just say the music business is taking a stand against those super realistic AI voices. And we have tons of free and paid VSDs for you. So buckle up because you're about to tune in. Spotify keeps being in the news and not always for the best possible reasons. Today, however, the announcement from the Swedish firm is Estestas Semlebans, in a move that will definitely get the Google overloads of YouTube looking over their shoulders, Spotify has announced a partnership with the BBC's Maestro and Play Virtuoso, a UK-based learning website. The partnership will now allow content creators and educators like someone you might know to include courses on all kinds of topics like music production and business. The company made the decision to move to video education because half of the podcasts and audiobooks streamed on the platform make up self-help themed content. For now, the subscription service is limited for the UK, with expansion coming soon to other regions. Once you subscribe to your favorite artists or creators, like me, you should have a link below their profile in the app allowing you to access their content. I was honored to be asked to be a beta tester for the platform and hopefully you will enjoy the content I made for them. If you are like me, sometimes you sit there and stare at your screen or bounce around reading something you have no interest in because it somehow found its way into your feed? Well, well, Google wants to help you waste time in more productive ways if you don't have access to your DAW right now. The official description is an AI experiment. It is called Instrument Playground, and it's a browser-based sampler that allows you to generate sequences of 100 different sampled instruments. You just need to tell it what you are looking for by typing in a description, and the AI will pick the instruments and put them into a sample loop. From there, you can chop, sequence, and edit the sample to get some fun outcomes. Instruments like the Western African Kora, a Japanese Koto, as well as ancient instruments are available for making different samples. Once you have locked in a fun loop, you can export the sample and then import it to any other music making software. Right now, it is available through a Google Lab program and not available to all countries. But if you are lucky enough to be in one of the regions designated as test market, get to playing and see what you can create. If your biggest fear is the matrix coming real and machines running the human race, you may have a new champion in the battle against AI. The UK's recorded music industry group BPI has sent official notification to Jammable, the company formerly known as Voiceify, that they may be going too far with their technology. Voiceify made waves when it was released by having 3,000 unlicensed voice models on its service. Singers like Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley, Prince, Tupac, Back, as well as current living artists like Ed Sheeran, Bruno Mars, and Taylor Swift all have models listed on the company's website. While deepfakes have been a problem for years, Jamable's use of subscription service to make money off their unlicensed vocal models is what is at issue. While countries can't move fast enough to regulate the use of AI, BPI seems to be taking the lead in trying to rein in bad actors in the field of intellectual property, especially when companies like Jamable's have their CEOs freely making claims of making a lot of money. With AI being both useful but also harmful, it is no surprise that big companies are interested in creating regulations and rules around AI usage. One of the first big partnerships to come together is between hardware manufacturer Roland and mega label Universal Music Group. The two companies have published principles for music creation with AI, which I will link below, that are a series of statements about responsible use of use of AI in music creation. The organization will also act as an advocate group to help shape how AI may be used in the future. As AI continues to grow through the world, I'm interested to see what standards get put in place around the technology. Getting big guns like Roland and UMG to partner up is definitely a step towards proper use of AI that protects original artists, but also allows for new creators to use the technology properly. We are a small channel and only 10% of the people who are watching our videos subscribe to our channel. If you want to see more of these, please consider like and subscribe. It really helps a ton. If a tree falls in the forest, 
does it make a sound? This whole saying was meant as a thought experiment about meaning of physics and the nature of observation. A 53-year-old man in Denmark is now finding out that if no one actually hears your track, then you are definitely going to make a sound when you get arrested. In what is a landmark case, the musician programmed both to stream his tracks 5.5 million times in one week. Prosecutors claim that the man made 635,000 from the fraudulent streams, but he was ultimately only ordered to repay 290,000 back to the streaming services and given a 29,000 fine. This is still one of the first criminal trials for the fraudulent streaming and could open the way for more of these lawsuits in the future. The streaming platforms claim that the fraud isn't rampant, with only 1 to 3 percent of streams being estimated as fraudulent on their platforms. No one really knows how accurate these numbers are, but I guess we are going to find out if more trials start happening. Tell me what you think. Are fraudulent streams an issue? Let me know in the comments below. After an absolute explosion of hardware-related news around NAM, I took a couple of weeks off from covering any keys that you could touch. It is only logical that my return to hardware reporting starts with something that's titled MEGA. With Superboot coming up, we also anticipate some new hardware-related news centered around the Berlin trade show. So buckle up, it's about to get interesting again in the synth world. Netherlands-based manufacturing Tasty Chips had given a preview of the GR Mega Granular Synth last year at Superboot. And a year later, they are finally ready to ship out production units. The first shipments are set to be released late May. This synth is a beast of a machine with four-layered multi-tumbrel capabilities that allow for 20 voices of polyphony. 5,000 total greens can be played with five different engine types, a 48 kHz 32-bit processing, and a maximum sample length of 60 minutes means anything can be turned into granular goodness in this workstation. Four-step sequencer, four LFOs, 64 steps of not only single notes but chords make this truly an all-encompassing instrument. That being said, this is not a cheap instrument. At 1800 euros, it will cost you a lot, but also it gives a lot of device in return. So you have to decide. If you want to pre-order the unit, the links are on the description. Another previously announced device is set to get its release as well. What I can't tell is if this really is a kid's device or if you are about to see tours of artists bringing along their favorite plastic device on the road. The MyTrax is a 5-track sampling groove box that has a built-in microphone and can load user samples or use one of the preloaded sample libraries for creating beats. Just like their previous device, the SK2 which looks more like a giant controller for a cool racing game on PS5, the MyTrax still looks like something you might see on your one-year-old nephew's floor. On April 9th, for all the aspiring Dr. DRs out there, that thing is more fun to tap pads, or if you are looking to be the coolest uncle in the world, you can pre-order the device on April 9th. From a whimsical child's instrument to something significantly more serious. How do we know this instrument is more serious? Because the designer is wearing a dinner vest in the promo video. Way to be more professional! UK producers Kulit Bamra's new device is trying to bring Indian drum sounds to the masses with the tabla touch. These are three different models of the device, including a pro model that goes for 1800 euros and includes 18 different instrument models like tablas, obviously, dolaks, midi dagams, jams, manjiras, and many more. And please excuse me if I mispronounced any of them, which I surely did. The studio version reduces the number of the instruments to three for just 600 euros, and a solo instrument costing the same, but in a bigger package is the same price for tablas only. Each device is MIDI compatible and can be used to play additional samples in your DAW or work directly with Steinberg's Dorica software for notation recording. The Touch Pro and Touch Studio feature two velocity sensitive pads that also include positional sensors to create real playback feel. With an onboard speaker and a size meant to be travel compatible, this means road trips no longer need to include 38 kilograms of tablas for musicians to have to coordinate on planes. The classic Roland Juno 60 scene hasn't been in production for 40 years now, and based on current pricing on the used market and the most producers can only play one of these 
in their dreams. With these sounds featured in songs you have known your whole life like Aha's Take On Me and Cindy Lauper's Time After Time, it is understandable that the device has become popular in the current synthwave revival. While there are many VSTs that emulate the synth, hardware reproductions are a bit different. Even Roland's own 206 sound module is just a sample-based emulation. What we didn't expect was a guitar pedal maker to take on the task of reproducing it. Well, we are in 2024 and I guess anything is possible. I can only describe the Wang on replay as minimal in style, as there is not much to look at here on first glance. It is whiter than the snow falling in Norway this time of year. But don't judge a book by its cover, because the six voice polyphonic scene can make some big sounds. Like the classic, the single oscillator works per voice, with square, triangle, sine and ramp modes, a single envelope, an LFO and four pole low pass filter that can get you all that 80s goodness. And at 900 Zero, the price is definitely intriguing as well. If the last device was a little bland looking, this next one will wake up the eyeballs. Danish startup Componental are putting themselves out there by releasing an open source device seen in bright yellow called the Dubby. What this device does is going to be open to interpretation of whoever buys it. Need a drum machine? This can be that. Want a new synth? You got it. Want a totally unique FX processor? Why not? Kevin Costner once said, if you build it, they will come. That is the concept of the Dubby, as Componental will give you support for your programming dreams to make the device into really anything that you want. With a high resolution OLED display, a 24 bit, 96 kHz sample audio processing, and four channel surround sound capabilities, whatever you want to do with the knobs, buttons, and AI is totally possible. There are 11 custom algorithms that will be available from the company to tweak if you need some place to start. For 330 euros, this could be the future of musical devices if more companies decide to open the hardware for custom programming. I can't dream of a day where boxes are just parts and creative users control their future and destiny in music. Or maybe that was just my dream last night before a giant watermelon started talking to me. Dreams are wild. Have you ever listened to your favorite album and thought, what will that smell like? Nah, me neither. I guess someone has thought, as nose music, that name is rather on the nose. Get it? Okay, I will stop the puns. Have released a fragment set inspired by classic albums. <laughs> what? We are serious here. I know this is no joke. Because the company announced it by saying, finally, music smells on their social media. The 10 perfume set is limited to 200 total sets and is being sold for $200. So if you have always wanted to smell like a Kraftwerk album, then get yourself to the link in the description. This week's free VST showcase, yes, includes our weekly Vox sample animal because we just can't get enough. Also some atmospheres, an EVQ option, and blowing saturation because why not? Yeah. All right, let's go. Pitchmunk is the latest addition to what is becoming a complete producer's toolbox of fun animals with VSTs. Just two knobs, pitch and formant allow you to adjust the pitch of any sample while some additional settings of filters, drive and mix gives you controls that will make your sounds as thick as little guy's cheeks on the device. <laughs> Look at those cheeks, cute. Keep it up, Vox. We can't wait to see what's next. Fa Filters Pro Q has long been the gold standard for do everything EQs. With its graphic interface and dynamic EQ applications, it really can be used for anything. While it is one of the best on the market, the price has been prohibitive for new producers as it does sit at a premium price point. ZL Equalizer is aiming to give producers another option at the best price available, free, including a dynamic engine as well as a collision compression tool similar to the FA filter, ZL looks to be a potentially great alternative. There are a lot of saturation plugins on the market today. In fact, there are more saturation plugins than any other type of available. Do we know that for sure? Is this really true? Fake news! Well, my writer said it, so I guess it is true. I wouldn't trust it. If you don't have a free saturation plugin, then I really collect them plugins. Can you really call yourself a producer? I do have a new one. That might be worth correcting this and getting you back on the path of becoming the next dead mouse. Integradios Blovdio has a very clean interface and very bad name 
and if Blick is your thing, you are going to love the UI. There are a surprising number of controls for a free plugin, including filters, digitization, valve, which introduces a tape type modulation, soft clipping, and even a darken to help keep things from getting out of control. With a plethora of presets, you can even test out various styles that may suit your sound and style. This is definitely a versatile device, so if you want to check it out, links are on the description. If the last plugin made you nervous about too many knobs and buttons, Zek Sounds is feeling your anxiety. Atmospheres, which is a reverb plugin meant to be simple enough to do one task and one task only. With just a single knob and randomizer feature, you can randomize the internal settings of the reverb and just apply those characteristics to the sound with a mix control. That's it! That's all the plugin has, and makes creating random ambient noise a simple process. As usual, links are in the description. And what do you think? Do you like simple devices or ones that have more controls and can get very complex? Let me know in the comments what type of user you are. Ultra Music Festival was this past weekend, and unfortunately, heavy rain interrupted the festivals in Miami. One artist that was scheduled to play was the world's previous number one DJ, Hardwell, as his Friday set didn't happen due to all the moisture wreaking havoc on the equipment. In an announcement that seemed to be making up for the Miss Musical set, he announced a collaboration with Apple on a new sample pack. And exclusive for Logic and GarageBand only, the sample pack took him a year to complete and is meant to inspire whole new generations of artists. If you're a Logic or GarageBand user, let us know if you have downloaded the pack and what you think of it. I like science and the study of human behavior is fascinating as it relates to music. Mental health is also a very big topic in the music industry. When we get any information that helps us understand behavior and why people act the way they do, it is good to consider how this may help us as a society. 3 million people per year are diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which affects almost everything in person's life. It can cause unstable mood swings and make it hard for people to create lasting relationships with those around them. Typically, people with BPD show other cases signs in their life, including having trouble staying organized or impulsive buying habits or behavior that seems self-destructive. A group of policy researchers have uncovered a surprising musical preference for people with BPD. In a new paper published in the Journal of Psychology of Music, those with BPD have been shown to prefer classical or just genres. The researchers believe that having a soothing yet complex and elegantly composed song helps them to relax and focus more on the music instead of turning inward and self-reflection. They found that those showing signs of BPD intentionally pick these genres of music over any of the other genres. They even declined to listen to more aggressive genres like punk and heavy metal. This was a bit counterintuitive, as the scientists had thought that a more chaotic lifestyle and brain pattern would contribute to being more interested in aggressive music to match their moods. As is often the case, science proved them incorrect in their initial assumptions. The human brain is a fascinating thing, and the science uncovers more interesting ways we interact with it, and I am more than interested to hear what they discover. Thanks for joining us again for this episode. I hope you liked it and tune in next week for more interesting music news stories.